hey, what is going on guys? This is Jason with Jadon Aquatics. Thanks for hanging out with me in the fish room again. So, you know as well as I know, you guys want some super crystal clear water. Everyone wants to look into a tank and see fish floating around like there's no water in there whatsoever and especially no debris in the water. So how in the world do you get water that is polished this perfectly clear? Well, I've got a DIY project that shows you guys how to do it, and there's just three simple things that you need. The first thing you need is a water bottle. It can be any size water bottle. Uh, almost all of them have about the same size opening, and that's really the only thing that you need to worry about is just the uh, size of the opening. Uh, the next thing that you need is, uh, some people refer to it as filter floss, but it's basically just polyfill. This is just stuff, it's just 100% polyester. Um, you can buy filter floss, but that stuff can get expensive. But if you go, um, I'll link all this stuff down below in the description, but if you can go to the store, this stuff is like, I don't know, $7 a bag or something like that from, from Amazon. And it, it'll last you for, for absolute ever. And the last thing you need, last thing you need is some type of power head. Um, almost everyone has a power head laying around somewhere. I found the best one to use is actually the uh, maxi jet. Uh, the reason that I like the maxi jet the most is it actually has this kind of pre-filter that goes on the end here. And this pre-filter is tapered. And since this pre-filter is tapered, it makes it a lot easier to actually insert it into uh, the water bottle. So if you have different size water bottles, that tapered end just kind of goes in like that. And it makes it very, very easy. So all you have to do is you just take the water bottle and, and you cut it somewhere so that you're only leaving the bottom half of it. You can cut it a little bit higher if you want to so you can put more of the polyfill in there. But if you get too much of that polyfill in there, it's actually gonna slow it down. And as it builds up with more and more debris, it'll get to the point where it's just not pumping whatsoever. So I try not to put a whole bunch of polyfill in there. So I typically like to cut mine about right there. And then after you get it cut, you're just gonna take it, you're gonna jam that polyfill into it and that is going to act as your uh, filter floss. So your the power head is going to work just like it normally does. Uh, you got this end that's going to be shooting out the water and then this end is going to do in the suction. So when you've got that on there, as it's sucking it in, it's sucking in and all of that water is being forced through that poly uh, fiber. And that stuff is catching everything that it possibly can. And when that stuff's in there tightly compact, almost nothing can make it through that. At least nothing that you can see with the naked eye is gonna get through there. So it's just gonna keep cleaning that and cleaning that and you're gonna be absolutely stunned at how quickly that uh, detritus uh, starts to build up on that. In fact, it's gonna get to a point, depending on how dirty your tank is, you're probably gonna have to change that stuff out uh, fairly often. I use these things all the time. The reason being is because uh, I run sponge filters. So your sponge filters after a while start getting kind of clogged and that's how you can always tell when it's time to clean them because you start seeing you know, fine particles floating in the water. So this is a quick way to actually throw this thing in there, let it run for a couple of hours and it will totally clean that tank so that it's perfectly clear. Um, I love it because whenever I'm filming, if there are particles in the water, the camera always wants to focus on the particles and not on the fish. So you got to keep your water uh, crystal clear. So this is just an absolute great thing uh, to have around. So let's go ahead and let's get this thing set up. Let's get the poly filter on it so you guys can see exactly what it looks like. And let's put it in a, a tank right now that's currently dirty and see if we can do some damage to it. All right, so as you can see in this tank right here, uh, you can see there's a lot of debris just kind of floating around in the water. And see, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this uh, uh, pump in there and we're gonna let this thing run for a few hours and I want you guys to uh, just see the difference in how quickly this thing will actually go through there and crystal clean that water and remove so many of those little fine particles in there and finally make that water where it's just absolutely just crystal clear again. Now when I put this in there, I like to kind of get it so that it's pointing down a little bit so it's kind of shooting across the substrate. Um, that way a lot of that detritus and stuff that's all built up down there in the substrate rises up to the top. Of course it's gonna blow your substrate around a little bit and you'll have to fix it later. But this is a real good way to really help you with your gravel backing and really help you get a lot of that detritus out of there. 
when you're first putting this thing in here, you gotta make sure that the that poly filter fills up with water or that thing will just take off and it'll, it'll float away from you. And as you can see right now, as it's running, you can see that it's just stirring up tons and tons of detritus. So we're gonna sit there and let this thing run uh, for a few hours and come back and see how it looks. Now granted, it's really, it, on a tank this size, on a 10 gallon, you can pretty much leave it where it is, but in a tank this size, since this is a 40 gallon, we probably wanna move this thing around every few, few hours or every hour or so. Uh, that way it can really get the whole thing uh, stirred up. Sometimes while this thing's running too, I'll come over here, again, in, in, a, in a bigger aquarium, and I'll just take my hand in here and I'll kind of wave some of this stuff around to try to help drive that stuff back up in the air. It doesn't help with this driftwood in here right now. It wouldn't be a bad idea to actually remove the driftwood while you did this to actually help the flow out so stuff isn't getting caught up actually on the driftwood. You'll notice now here, it's only been about 30 minutes. And you can see this thing is absolutely already compacted with stuff. Uh, when it starts getting so full like this, uh, it comes to the point you're gonna have to remove it and put another one in. Uh, because again, this stuff just cleans so, so well. All right, you can see here how much cleaner the water already is. And it's still working on it. But again, the problem that we have right now is is this thing is absolutely full. So I doubt there's hardly any water pressure coming through here because it can't suck it through all that detritus and mulm build that's in there. Um, so we got to remove that that stuff out of there and put some, uh, some new polyfill in there and let that thing run a little bit longer. And you can just keep replacing it until you get the water just as clear as you want, until it gets to the point where it's just absolutely perfectly clear. This stuff just will remove just everything that you see in the water. All right, there you go. There is how to make your own uh, filter to make your water just super, super sparkling clear. If you guys got any questions or comments, be sure and leave them down below. So thanks again, guys, and God bless.